Hey folks, it's Fritgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Alps Panorama at the Northern Sea here in Farming Simulator 19. Plows or plow, uh, one or the other. Uh, the new crop of grass that I've got planted in the field all the way up over there, we're not going to be able to get any benefit from that, are we? Like, not if, we, uh, if we're only doing it to the end of this year. I mean, I'm pretty sure actually some people said that I should do another year as well. But, and maybe I did originally think that that's what I was going to do. But I think, to be honest, like the amount of time it would take to do another full year and the big harvest. Uh, it's going to run this series on just a little bit too long. Lo longer than I would really want it to run. So, we'd be better off just kind of doing it like this. We'll do a few bits. Okay, you're not going to go anymore that way. I'll have to come into that one from the bottom. So if I go around the big old stone right here. It's that one off of there. Stump grind that bit away like that. Then up over here. And yes, that is perfect. That's absolutely spot on perfect going into the bottom of it like that. He says. Ah. It wasn't quite spot on perfect, but now the stump grind is over the top of what's left. That is. That's, that's taken out the rest of it. And we've got five trees left. Tool is ready to unload. Okay, let's clear that bit. Is that all of it? Uh, yeah, that one's gone. Okay, and then we can jump back over here and... Right, I, I actually thought that had gone to the end. Of, I was looking at that. I was thinking, that's gone to the end of the row, isn't it? No, it hasn't gone to the end of the row. So we now need to unload this one, and then we will run this back to the yard, get this tipped out, bring the truck back to the field, and then the combine is not got very much left to do at all now. We're looking at... Are you... Oh, yeah, you are. You're out far enough. Um, I don't know. It might get it all in one more tank. Two more tanks, definitely. All right? There's no way that it's going to do... Looking at where it narrows over at that end. Yeah, I'd say that we've got two more tanks for the combine, and then we're done. This field is all finished. Then we need to wait until mid-autumn for the next crops to be ripe. Well, that's going to give us time for some of the pigs to fatten up. We might actually be ready to sell some of the pigs. We can just keep the animals ticking over in the yard. I'm seriously considering selling the chickens because they're not very big scale. We've got a pallet of eggs right over there, and it's one less thing that we've got to feed. Although, to be honest... Feeding the chickens is not really much of an issue, is it? Right? Fe feeding the chickens is, is fairly straightforward. The biggest problem we've got with chickens is uh, just dealing with those eggs that we've um, now got. So I could just take those eggs, sell them, and bring the pallet back, and then the chickens are still going to be nice and easy. Because feeding the chickens is done exactly the same time as feeding the pigs, and we've literally only got to just tip one lot in. We don't have to deal with water... So the most amount of work involved with looking after these animals now is looking after the cows. Is making up the mixed feed and then taking trailer loads of the stuff over to them. And that's obviously a bit more, quite a bit more work than any of the rest of the animals. But it's still not all that bad. How much milk have I got over there at the minute? Let's go and have a look. We do have 167,000 litres of milk over here. Be able to sell that. Yeah, go into here. Milk capacity, 800,000. Jump to there. <laughs> wow. $369,000. And we get 2254. All right, let's go with that. There. Still leaving 900 and... Oh, that's because it's 925 litres of milk turned up just in that short space of time. Uh, that's, <laughs> that's not bad going. We've now got half a million. We've now got half a million in there. The cows do actually need a little bit. We're 359 cows. We've still got a lot of room for a lot more cows in here. And remember, we are just sort of fattening some of these at the moment. But can you imagine the sort of milk that we're going to be getting from one of these pens if we're doing it on normal and we're not doing it on seasons? And we've got the... Oops, let's not drive into anything over there. Um, 
if we're doing this on normal gameplay and not seasons, so we don't have the young stock turning up, and it's just the milk that we're getting, and we're doing it on the... It, we are doing it on easy settings. I'm not going to do it on mid-range economies. Well, you know, I could be persuaded on that one, so I want to hear your thoughts and opinions. Should I... In the next series, the Hagenstedt series, where I will, it, it, like, everything is large scale, right? I, I do big scale stuff on there. Um, I, I'm not messing around. I, I don't do things small. We won't be worrying too much about realistic capacities. I keep the machines. I don't do unrealistic widths or anything like that. I have the machines. I may tweak the speed a little bit so they go a bit faster, but mostly I do it down to capacities of trailers and the machines themselves. Like the combines will potentially go a tiny bit faster in the field, kind of Stevie tweaks on those. And I'll probably use the Stevie machines as a jumping off point, but then um, it basically is a jumping off point to start negotiations. That's how, that's how we can look at that. Um, but then instead of keeping the Stevie machines exactly as they are, I will then go along and alter the capacitors, capacitors, capacities of them just a little bit further so that it's more in keeping with what I would actually want for a series. Okay, let's go on up to you. Now bring you on round over here. Like that. Instantly start up. Nose dive down into there. That's not going to work very well though, is it? Oh, yeah, that is... That is actually worked remarkably well. I didn't think that one was going to sort of cut it, to be honest. <laughs> cut it, yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm here all week, ladies and gentlemen. I am here all week. Let's get you out of there. I'm, I'm quite looking forward to finishing these few trees. I'm already getting fed up with doing these trees here. Let's lift you up. This one is going to have to go like that. And I still don't know it's going to reach. No, that one's not going to reach. Have to try and... You round... Over this way a bit, maybe. Nope. Uh, okay, let's get that one over that side first, then. And then... There. Right, that's not sawing. That's now sawing. And that's... Possibly. Oh, he is actually going to... That is sawing enough. I don't think it's going to saw enough for all of it. No. It might. That way. Ooh. Okay, that did actually work there. That actually got everything that I wanted to get. So I got these two right here. These two are probably going to be our biggest problem trees. Most difficult to get. It would help if I could actually reach them. There we go. Here is tree number one. And definitely not anywhere close to getting that stump on there. So we're going to have to try, we'll have to try and get that one from the other direction. But this tree here, I'm hoping that I can get that one down first. And then the stump grinder, we're going to have to work this one down little bit by little bit as well but if I can now that I've gone over the top of this one I should be able to approach this one from the other direction as well still not no he's, he's still not taking that one out right uh, top down to this way I can do this I can absolutely do this I can remove all of this I can take all of this thing out we can do it. I can make this work. Like that right there. There. See? That's, that's taking that bit out. And that's got all of that tree. There is only one tree stump left here. It doesn't like it. Ooh. Oh, I caught it. I ca I've, got, I've got the hitbox on it. And yes, we are done. Okay. So I'm going to move you back up here out of the way. I'm going to force tip that one as well. Like that. It doesn't force tip when the material... No, when, when the spout is 
pointing out into the air a lot more. It doesn't like to force tip it. It doesn't like that at all. So I will stop you right there. You're all finished there. Combine has got 70% left on it. So we're going to go... Actually, I'm going to go back there to the Combine. And Combine is actually finished now. So if I stay there a second, I want to go to you. We'll go and unload that Combine. We'll... Okay, we're, we're not going to do the Combining just yet. Uh, the com uh, Landscaping just yet. We're going to go to the Combine. We're going to unload it. We're then going to move it out off of the field. I didn't bother with a trailer for this Combine, did I? Um, so I'm just going to make sure that I keep that one out of the way a little bit. Let's bring you over this way. You will unload. And then we can stop that. He's, he's just got to unload into there. Like that. And then I can go to the combine over here. I didn't buy a trailer at all, I don't think. As far as I know, I didn't. I, as far as I remember, I didn't bother buying a trailer for this one at all. So I'm going to stop driver there. And uh, I already saved the course. Not that it really matters because we won't be using that particular course again anyway. Um, start the engine up. And you're done. So if I just fold that one up there and then I can fold the combine up fold the combine up there we go, you've got to wait till the spout is back it used to be that some combines you could fold them up while the spout was out in the air and it would still work but for some reason this one doesn't seem to like doing that I, I don't really know why but uh, that's just the way it is now I'm not going to be able to get you into the yard without a trailer. I'm just going. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring you over to here, and I'm going to stop you there. Uh, I will lower that one down at least, and we'll leave that one parked there for now. Then I'm going to switch over to this one. I will run this trailer round while I've, as I've got it hitched on. I might as well. We will run this one straight through to the cows a minute. And we will unload the... Wow. Okay. Uh, maybe not take that ramp <laughs> absolutely full speed like that. Probably not the best way to go about doing things. I'm going to bring you in here and we're going to feed the cows a minute. As all we need to do for the cows is put the mixed ration in here like this. Um, there's a very good chance that I will decide to use the placeable feed mixer that we've got on this one for the Hagenstedt map. I mean, the, the principle that I followed on that map was just anything that make my life easy. Pretty much is just do anything that makes my life go reasonably easy and, and quickly and efficiently. And this mix feeder is definitely one that does that. I did have a mixed feeder that was, you know, the, the one with the, the uh, loading wagon, the, the, the mixed feeder wagon, rather. Um, and it had the silo thing on the front where you could just go into the silo, although I sped up the rate at which that one would fill up, and that worked beautifully. That really did, because I used to use that same one for unloading the silage down at the... Let me just unhitch that. Let's use the same one for unloading the silage down at the silage thingy. Um, you know, you, you know the silage thingy, uh, the the BGA, the BGA, and because um, you could do that with just an ordinary trailer, you didn't have to lift it up with a bucket. They changed that in FS15, making you use a bucket to do it, and I was really disappointed with that. I I felt that that was unnecessary, forcing us to have to use a loader shovel to go and do it, because I didn't like doing it like that. I preferred doing it my way. Um, but anyway, that, that's, that's how it was. So what we're going to do here, I think I may already have a route for this one. Let's, let's have a look. We want to go into... Uh, no, I don't want to go into... I want to go to here. So this is field 7, isn't it? Now we've got field 7. Combine, lime, rake, slurry, cultivate, sowing and spray. No, we don't have a field 7 tip. So... Um, I've got a temp four. I've got just tip there, but I don't think that's yeah. That's that's one that I don't actually want to keep. So what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to go into here, and it's just going to be one of those. It doesn't matter what we use for the setting when we first do the recording. All I got to do is just make this so that it does run along here and then unloads. So I will start course recording right there. 
We're going to drive back to the yard. We will take this through to the new area that we want to tip. This is where all the straw is going to be put loose. And then we'll come back out again. And the reason that I'm thinking of doing this in the Hagenstedt series is because then I don't have to use a baler. Um, although, see, this is the one thing with it. I don't want to use course play in that. But handling straw might require us to use course play. If we want to be able to do that in a reasonable um, fashion. Although, I guess we don't really need to. Because I can use auto load, I can use bales, I can alter the capacity of bales so that we're able to use balers. I can speed up the speed at which I can do the bailing. I don't know yet on that. We will wait and see. I'll see how that one plays through. I mean, that one, I, I, I'm not going to be sort of pinioned down by anything resembling realism or anything like that at all. Okay, I'm going to save that course there as field 7... Uh, straw tip like that and then I'm going to clear that course and then I'm going to go into here and I'm going to go field 7 combine right there and then I'm going to go field 7 straw tip append that onto the end of there like that and we're going to switch that one onto the field work not going to change anything else I'm going to bring that one back. I don't need to do any other settings or changes or anything at all. All i got to do is bring you over to here. Point you in that direction like that there. And then uh, start course at first waypoint. Take you over to here. That's going to lower that one down. It is now loading straw into the machine going to follow where the combine has been and it is going to load up a whole load of straw and then it should come out onto the side over here and it should go and put that straw back in the silos for us now possibly i would have actually used this on my hagenstedt game if i had known how to use course play if it was properly available and i could have puzzled it out i possibly would have used this I I can't actually say at the moment. I used to just use... Well, I, I think there was only standard hired help to be used. I don't think the AI vehicle extension came out until ever 15. So I, I, I don't know about that one. Uh, one thing that I did figure out how to do and I used to use quite a bit was I did eventually figure out how to widen the pickup widths on things. Um, I didn't do it very much. I used to just tweak them out a little bit. Or, well, actually, I'm not sure. Maybe I didn't. No, I didn't know how to do that back then. I did not know how to do it in FS13. So what I would do is I would spend ages hunting for anything that had a um, wider pickup width, which would make it a lot easier. So I had balers and I had a couple of um, forage wagons that had pickup widths that were wider. They were basically about a quarter of the pickup width that you can see right now. Um, extra out on each side. So it wasn't unrealistic pickup width, but it was enough that uh, if your rows were a bit untidy, it would still easily gather everything up without causing any problems. And that was quite important to me. And that way it was it was able to keep going, it was able to keep running, and you didn't come you didn't come into any issues with it or anything like that. Didn't cause you any problems. I'm just hanging around with this one I just want to make sure that the next line does actually run through um great demand at train station mill there we go 99% on there and now he should head down across the field and we should run through this next course straight out onto the road and he's away again and doing a wonderful job we've got it he's also doing at a reasonable speed as well I mean here is following the speed that I used when I recorded the course which is probably a good thing because at least you know I slowed down going around the slightly sharper corners uh, it's bringing that in around there and if all goes well it should get to this point on this one here tip trigger reached it's saying so he should get to there and he should unload everything yes 
Absolutely fantastic. We're unloading a whole lot right into there. So we've now got loose straw going into this one right here. And then once the loose straw is, you know, that's, that's, we're now dealing with all of that. So in the Hagenstead series, I'm going to leave that for a minute. I'm going to skip up to here. Uh, we basically got a choice then between do we do it like that with loose straw or do I go for like bigger bales? Not quite sure at the moment quite how I'm going to do that. But what I need to do right now is I need to we bring that out so it's much bigger. Actually, yeah, okay. You know what? We'll go. We'll go absolutely huge like this. We'll make it as big as we can, and then we're going to also increase the brush strength all the way up to that. And then I'm just going to use the middle mouse button here, and that's the one that smooths everything off. There, see? See how smooth that makes it? Absolutely smooth. That is, I tell you what, that is absolutely wonderful. There, right there. That is even smoother than David Hasselhoff. Look at that. Smoother than Dave, smoother than the Hoff. Doesn't get much smoother than that, does it? Let's be honest. If, if, you go, if you're going for a measure of smooth, Smoother than the Hoff is about as smooth as you're ever going to get. Right? You, you, I don't think you can compete with that. Look at that. That's a thing of beauty right there. That right there is a thing of beauty. Now, I'm curious. Can you plow the stone texture? Does that stop you from being able to plow or not? I don't think it does. I don't think that feature. I don't think that is actually a feature. So I don't think that we need to do anything to it. That being said, let's just carefully bring that down. It's still lowering it down a bit. So it needs to lower it down a great deal, does it? Not very much more. That's probably enough. Let's zoom in and, and have a look in under here. What are we doing? Oh, I, it's just, basically, it's trying to push down the landscape just a bit more. It's going to ultimately end up, like, pushing everything all the way down to dead level across the whole map. That's, that's kind of what it's aiming to do. So I don't need to do any more than that. But just in case the stone does cause us any issues, I'm going to deal with that right now. I'm going to go, we, uh, no, that's the shape. We press X to change over, and then tab tabs through the different textures that you've got so we've got there's grass texture uh there's muddy texture we'll, we'll put some muddy texture on here it does also plant a bit of grass seed on there as well there muddy texture that's done so there's nothing else that i need to do on that bit i'm curious was there any more that i need to do this bit up here no that doesn't need anything doing to it that one is fine and then this over here, we're not going to do that until I've come down and cut these trees away. Don't think I'm going to worry too much about cutting these trees away because we've got these um, bits stuck in here. So I won't be doing field two in there anyway. Okay, there's that bit finished. That's looking absolutely fantastic. And now we can run down here. So that tree just down there, that lone pine... That one we do want to get rid of. The other pines, I'm going to leave those. I don't want to go too close to the edge because it's close to the edge of the map. The, frequently, I have found in other playthroughs and other times using any kind of map, if you get too close to the edge of a map, it can cause problems. It can cause you issues. It can cause game crashes. Um, for some reason, the edge of a map can get very, very hinky and weird. So I don't want hinky and weird. I want to just be able to keep going with things fairly normally. So I'm going to stay reasonably far away from the edge of the map. So that we don't have any problems. And I don't own that bit right there. So we can leave that bit. We can head back over here. Blocking. Why is the Zerian being blocked? What's, what's blocking? Oh, I know what's blocking. No, it's not. Oh, I thought it was. Oh, no, it's that one's this one. 
this one. This one's why. You're still out in the field. Let's move you out of the way. We'll drun we'll, we'll, we'll drone you. We'll run you over here. And I will take you back into the yard and we will tip out the last of the barley. We can also take a look and see just how much barley we've got. That straw will keep going for a minute. And... I mean, we, we can work on the trees. We've now got half a million dollars, so I can go and buy a little bit more land for the big field. We've got the animals fed. I haven't put any straw in for the pigs. There's one little job that I do need to do. Let's just go and have a look in here a second. Uh, we've got 180. It's going to be 200,000 litres of barley in there. We've got 200,000 litres of canola. We've not got very much of those or those. We'll be able to sell a bit of the canola. I don't know how much. No, we, we're not going to be able to sell huge quantities. I mean, I guess we can sell the sunflowers and keep the canola for the pigs. We could sell half the canola, 100,000 litres, and then keep the rest, maybe? I'm not quite sure. Anyway, I have half a million right now. Where are my tractors? I need to go to map overview. Why do I not... There's... Growth. So, oh... He's all the way out over here. That's, that's, I, I don't know why I couldn't see him. Seems strange. Oh. Oh, I see. Because of how zoomed I was. Right, zoom, zoom does make a difference. Okay, so we go to lands like this. I've got half a million dollars. I want to buy that bit there. That's 220. That's 250. That bit. And I also want that bit there. Then we also want to come over here. I want that one, that one, that one, that one, and that one. And that is going to be it for our super large field. I'm not going all the way over here. I'm actually wondering if I should go up and get those two. I think we'll leave those two. We will get these two here. And then we want to come over here and we want to get these four right here. Map overview. And it was that one that I was also considering, wasn't it? Except that that one's got that road in the way, which is going to make life difficult for us. We can still do it with that road in the way, can't we? But maybe we, No, we won't. We won't worry about that one. We'll go. We'll get these bits over here. So it's that one there, those, and then this one here as well. We can like smooth a little bit out there. And then these two here... We could potentially get those later if we've got the money and the inclination to do so. Let's get let's get these. Let's get these here in the middle. So I'll buy that one. And that one. And that one. And that little bit there. Like that. And then you. I don't know. I've got 166,000 left. Which is not... A, that's 178. That one's 328 up there, goodness me. And you and you are both too expensive as well. So I'm not getting anything else on there. There is something that I want to do, though. There was another thing that I want to do, and a few people have actually told me that I should be doing this. So I'm, I'm going to do it now. We're going to go into our garage, get the items that we own right here. And we're going to go all the way over here to that bunker silo there. And we're going to sell that one. Yes. That has now been removed. And then we're going to go into landscaping and we're going to go over here. We want to go a little bit faster. I want to bring it back over here. So there's the bit here. And I want to change this. I've now gotten rid of the bunkers. Well, that's about all we've got time for in today's episode. So we're going to go and take a little bit of a break. We need to chill out on the beach, relax and build up some strength. So while we're doing that... If you've enjoyed the episode, then could you please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.